Feature in a Short. Hello, welcome to Feature in a Short, where filmmakers present, watch, and discuss films. My name is Justin Joseph Hall. This time we have an amazing guest. Her name is Piper Worley. She is a writer, producer, director, and uh, she loves to work with fantasy as her subjects. Her writing is very socially progressive, including funny and silly dialogue. So Piper brought her first short film, Veronica. Veronica. It's about a descendant of ancient sirens. So she has some magical powers, but she is currently living on an island and is really obsessed with finding love. But given her tendency to kind of react certain ways using her powers, she's having a really hard time like maintaining a relationship. Mm. I already relate. <laughs> <laughs> And for the film, we took shots with the characters. We're doing tequila shots. Wow. After we had a quick discussion. This was really your transition over to film too as well, right? Yeah. So what what is different about film? Yeah, I mean, just like things come off so differently in film than they do in theater. And like what and the choices that she, the actor, made like totally work. Like it's perfect. But film acting is supposed to be way more natural, quote unquote, than theater acting, where you kind of act with your whole body versus like on film because of the proximity, like a simple like eyebrow raise or like eyes opening a little bit can say so much where like versus on stage, that's just, you wouldn't even see it. You wouldn't even see it because you got to perform for the people in the nosebleed seats, right? I was kind of like learning that like while we were filming and my actors were amazing. Like I feel like Veronica really nailed making those bold choices as a character that like were pretty theatrical but they still worked on film. It felt like the first episode or something. It didn't feel like a short. Well, I think a lot of shorts are like, it's good if you feel that way because like shorts don't make money. You make wow. shorts to yeah. like make something new. But yeah, I mean, so the inspiration for this was I was, with a, I was in a writing group with four other women and we wanted to make a web series and we picked the theme of sirens so that's that was like the original like instigator yeah and so that never the web series never came to fruition but it was through that network of people that i met that i was able to make this film yeah it's really cool um i think the biggest surprise was just like dealing with some like unexpected um actor anxiety in a, in a couple scenes mm. and then i was like oh i thought we clarified that and like we totally didn't mm. and then like kind of like being on set and realizing there was some things that like everyone should have been on the same page about in terms yeah. of like what lines meant and like what the script was saying and like we weren't on the same page and like, not freaking out about it and just being like oh god deep breaths yeah. <laughs> 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 we're gonna figure it out um, I paid the majority of people on set, but I wasn't able to pay everyone. But I did my best to at least like try to make people like, be able to do it. Well, it's good that you actually finished. Like, that's an accomplishment. Totally. And that you tried to pay everybody is great, you know. I mean, and it's really thanks to like a couple to like people who helped me in post production that like it did finish because I was ready to give up quite a few times. Oh really? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> for sure. It's a whole thing. I think this was a really good experience because like it took me away from this idea that I have to only do one thing because I think I thought for a long time I was like I should only write. Well how do you usually start? It, it all, for me it always starts with the character. It's It can start from like oh I like have a vision of like this funny thing happening and then just try like writing and see what happens. I'm like very into the idea of a sloppy copy, which is what first drafts were called when I was in grade school, which is really big for me because my first draft is so horrible. Like I'll have friends come over and like read them out loud or like have them read in writing groups. And that's really important to like have that kind of step uh, like, back. Yeah, like audience is important. Yeah, I, audience I feel is the really same important. in post, like it's the same thing. Like you just, the feeling in the room, right? Yeah, totally. It, it totally changes when another person looks at it versus like when I look at it, it just becomes like, I become like that picture of Mark Zuckerberg where his like skin is really pasty and his like eyes are glazed over. <laughs> 
you know, and it's just like, we need to bring another person. <laughs> like, and I think that like holds me back a lot too, because it's really hard to show someone something that isn't perfect, but I'm not going to hear the things that I hate if I don't show them to other people. Yeah, yeah. The second fantasy themed film that Piper brought along was The Last Unicorn, an animated feature film from 1982. It is a beautifully drawn and colored animated film. The Last Unicorn is an incredible movie. It is based off of the book, The Last Unicorn, which is by Peter S. Beagle. And in a rare win for movies, he also did the screenplay, which I think is really great. I love when that happens. The production companies were shared between Japanese and American studios, and something I just learned. One of three production studios involved with this was a Japanese studio called Topcraft. Topcraft was eventually bought by three Japanese people, including Hayao Miyazaki, and was turned into Studio Ghibli, which I love <laughs> so much that I have a Totoro tattoo on my body. That's true. <laughs> There's also incredible voice actors, Alan Arkin, Jeff Bridges, Mia Farrow, Al Angela Lansbury, Christopher Lee. It's like an incredible voice actor cast. And then the soundtrack is performed by the group America and the London Symphony Orchestra. Yeah. Anyways, uh, this was like had a huge effect on me. Like I continue to when watch did you it. First see it. I must have watched it for the first time when I was like six or seven. So during the last unicorn. We put the movie on, we served some oranges picked from trees, and had some rat soup. After watching, we had another discussion. It was cool to pair it with a short, because there was a lot of parallels. There was, like, a person who felt really out of place amongst humans, who really wanted to, like, know who they were, figure out who they are. It's got a lot of hippie, hippie ideas in this one. It did have a lot of hippie ideas. And this reminded me a lot of, like, Labyrinths, too, just the 80s oh, fantasy. Realm. And like the combination of like rock music with a fantasy. Yeah. Which I love. And um, there's like a lot of really good quotes in this. It's like, release me. We are sisters, you and I. And like, <laughs> my sisters and I like to quote that a lot. <laughs> we are sisters, <laughs> you and I. <laughs> Thank you so very much for listening to Feature in a Short. In the forecast to look forward to, we will have an end of the decade discussion on what films are the best of the 2010s. That will be um, our last of season three, our episode 20, going into 2020. We will be talking with three big film fans, Thomas Kelsey, Elizabeth Yo Kim, and Jasmine Zimprut. It's going to be great. Also, we have created a new award called the Fresh Air Award. It will be the film of the decade that pushed the art form forward the most, based on style and or content. If you want to contact us in the meantime, you know where to hit us up. That is at 4 Wind Films. That's at F-O-U-R-W-I-N-D-F-I-L-M-S. You'll hear from us next time. Peace. <laughs>